Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I'm down here at Aachen in Germany at the home of AC Schnitzer to try out their very latest car. This started life as a BMW M8 competition Grand Coupe. It is now an ACS8 Sport. We're going to have a quick walk around this car and have a look at some of the changes they've made here at AC Schnitzer and then take it out on the road for a quick drive before taking it to a testing center that these guys have very kindly arranged. So we should be able to push it to its limits in a very safe environment. Starting around the front of the car, we've got a very aggressive splitter under the bonnet. Well, yes, they've added some performance upgrades to this, bringing the 625 horsepower 4.4 liter V8 twin turbo to 720 horsepower and also the torque figure up to 850 newton meters. Now we're along the side of the car, what stands out most is probably these 21 inch forged ACS3 wheels. They look absolutely stunning and they go really well with the brand's hatch grey paintwork. They've also got what looks like a centre lock on them but that's just for aesthetics. Which they do fit the arches really well and that's not just down to the fact that they're 21 inch it's also down to the fact that this car has got some ACS lowering springs. So we're talking 20 millimeters lower at the front and about 15 millimeters lower at the back. So it gives the car a real stance. You might also notice these lovely carbon fiber side skirts. Again, just adding to the overall aggression of this M8 Grand Coupe. Walking around the back of the car, probably one of the most important upgrades to me is the ACS exhaust system. It's an axle back system, a bit like the one on my M2 competition, so it doesn't affect your OPF filters or your cats, but it does enhance the sound of that 4.4 litre V8 twin turbo. Something else you might have noticed is this lovely boot spoiler. It's really aggressive on this M8 Grand Coupe, and in fact, this is unique and different to the one that's on the M8 Coupe. The only other aesthetic differences on the outside of the car are the various AC Schnitzer stickers that apparently add about 15 brake horsepower per sticker. It might have been per letter, I can't remember. What's this car like? Ironically, I've not actually driven a normal M8 Competition Grand Coupe, so this is the first one I've driven. And I have to say, from the front seat, it feels very similar to an M8 Coupe. The front interior, the dashboard, the seats, the steering wheel, the bonnet, the vision, everything feels pretty much identical. It's only when you look in the rear view mirror or behind me here that you see that it's obviously got a proper couple of seats behind me and you can actually get four adults in this car. What's this car like on the road? Well, it's very greasy and slippery outside and this is actually fitted with some fairly worn Pirelli P0. So even with its X drive, it has been moving around a little bit, but we can push its driving limits a little bit later when we go to the testing facility. What have AC Schnitzer done to this particular car? Well, they've added some of their very, very nice signature paddles, which I absolutely love. I tried them in their M5 competition and I tried them in last year's ACS2. They're really simple, they look beautiful. I just think they add so much to a fairly ordinary but beautifully well screwed together cabin. We also have an ACS pedal set in here. Again, something I'm familiar with because I have some in my M2 competition and they feel really good to the foot. Even when your feet are a little bit wet, which they have been getting in and out of the car today because it is rather damp out there. But they've just got a lot of feel. You know where your foot is and I know that sounds crazy, but especially in my manual M2 competition, I really love the grip that the little bits of rubber that the pedal set's got. And also there's a foot rest as well, which complements the other two pedals. What's this car like to drive? Well, it's very, very fast. It's almost too fast for the public road, but obviously in Germany, you're okay with that because you've got your autobahns. And this actually has a top speed of well over 300 kilometers per hour, and they're working on completely delimiting it at the moment, so watch this space. The quoted 0-62 time for this car is about 3.1 seconds. That's only a tenth quicker than the regular M8 Competition Grand Coupe. 
but some of the more impressive figures, which we can't try today because we don't have enough private land, is the 100 to 200 figure, which is under six seconds, I believe it's 5.9 seconds. Also the 0 to 200 kilometers per hour figure, which is just under 10 seconds. I think it's 9.7 or 9.8 seconds. 0 to 200 kilometers an hour. That's about 125 miles an hour in less than 10 seconds. That gives you a good idea of just how fast this car is. So in fact, let's cut to me a little bit earlier testing this car's claim 0 to 62 figure out. As I say, it is greasy, it is slippery, and I'm on some fairly worn Pirelli P0 tires. Okay guys, we're gonna test out this car's claimed 0 to 62 figure. I must point out that the road is extremely damp and slippery, so it's not gonna be an ideal launch, but we'll have a couple. So it's in four wheel drive sport. Everything is switched off, so all the traction aids are off. I'm gonna hold it on the brake, foot on the accelerator, and here we go. Oh, loads of wheel spin. <laughs> 3.52 seconds with loads of wheel spin. seconds on damp tarmac. That's just massively impressive. Okay, hopefully you enjoyed that. As you can see, I was really struggling to get the grip down. Even with the X-Drive system, the actual tarmac itself wasn't a particularly grippy tarmac. And obviously with the added rain and stuff it was just sliding but i still think a sub three and a half seconds of 60 in those kind of slimy conditions are just amazing and you can see the power and the torque of this car just lighting up all four wheels in first gear especially unbelievable but once you got second gear it just hooks up and you're off in terms of the actual handling dynamics of this car well on the road it feels really good it feels very comfortable, very pliant. Obviously we're on German roads, which tend to be a lot smoother than UK roads, but this is on lowering springs. So I assume they're slightly stiffer than the regular spring setup. And I have to say it feels very, very comfortable in here and every bit as compliant as a normal M8 coupe. In terms of what this sounds like with the exhaust or the axle back system, it definitely has more of a bassy note to it, especially on the overrun. So when you change down, hopefully you can hear that. Definitely more of a bassy throb, if you like, but it's not too in your face. On the outside of the car, again, it sounds a bit louder than a regular setup, but obviously with all the restrictions, etc., that are in place these days, it's really difficult to make this car sound like an absolute beast or monster because at the end of the day, everything that comes out of AC Schnitzer has to be TUV approved and meet all these new regulations and stuff. So although it enhances the sound, it's nothing too ridiculous. It's as good as they can get away with. While we're talking about that, everything from AC Schnitzer is warranted by them and as a main manufacturer warranty. So. For instance, the power upgrade, a lot of people look at them, especially in the UK, I think the one for my MT competition is around 4,000 pounds, which is a lot of money, but they fully warranty the engine. So if my engine goes pop or my gearbox or something due to the power upgrade and BMW say, well, we're not covering it, AC Schnitzer will cover it. So it's a, it is a, it's an approved, basically manufactured warranty part. So everything that you buy from them is recognized by BMW. And that's why AC Schnitzer works so hard on getting all these parts right, getting the exhaust right, getting things like the power kit right, because it means that you can have your brand new M8 competition Grand Coupe that's worth 140,000 pounds, but it's still warranted. So if, God forbid, that engine did go pop, I would get a replacement engine if I had AC Schnitzer's power upgrade in there. In 
terms of ride comfort and driving dynamics, well, obviously I can't really talk about them now because I find myself in a traffic jam in the middle of Aachen rush hour on a Monday. But thankfully, earlier on this morning, we did take this car to a small testing ground locally and I was able to push it to my limits and talk about what I was feeling. It was very slippery, it had been raining all morning, but it was a lot of fun. So let's cut to that now and see what I thought about this car. Remember, this is almost two tons and over five meters long. Okay guys, you join me at a private test facility. This is the little handling circuit. <laughs> it's probably not that little, but in a car this big that has over 700 horsepower, it doesn't feel particularly big, but it's mighty impressive. It really, really is. Just incredible. So agile and so much confidence and so much grip, obviously down to the MX drive. But the tune of this engine, although 720 horsepower sounds like an absolute monster and something that you couldn't tame around here, it's calibrated so well. So it doesn't feel more aggressive than say a standard M5 competition. It just feels like there is more there. There's more torque and there's more power when you need it, but it's just lovely. You touch the throttle and the back end comes out like that. It's just lovely. Oh, it's just so nice. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Massive thanks and shout out to the whole AC Schnitzer team for allowing me to come out here and drive their fantastic M8 Grand Coupe on this amazing test facility especially. I mean, they've really looked after me this time. It makes such a difference to be able to actually legally push a car to its limits on a nice little handling circuit like this. It's just really, really good. And it gives you a good understanding of what the car is all about in a safe environment. And I have to say, for something that is basically two tons, and 720 horsepower, you would really think that this sort of tight circuit would just be completely pointless and unusable, especially as it's wet, but <laughs> I've still had plenty of fun out here and it just shows you how incredibly capable this car is that it can do what it's doing in an environment that you really wouldn't think it was built for. So mega, 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 thank you so much. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I will see you at the next one. Cheers guys.